What is up guys, Coop here, and today we're going to be looking at the Nightborn. Uh, so I just finished doing a video about the Void Elves, so be sure to check that out. But today we're going to be focusing exclusively on the Nightborn. So, let's actually dive in. First thing that we need to do is read about what their sort of tooltip is going to be saying. So, Farisa, or Falarisa, I think it's Farisa, uh, and the other Nightborn have managed to quell their addiction to the Nightwell and that has plugged them from inside the protective barrier of Suramar. So if you did the quest line, you kind of already know that. For, And then they basically have that addiction for 10,000 years. So basically they're kind of trapped in a bubble and the Nightwell is kind of like the only power source. It's kind of like the Sunwell for the Blood Elves, but the opposite. So you can kind of see how, why they go to the Blood Elves and join the Horde. Um, when the Legion came, the leaders of their race made a pact that created a civil war. Now liberated the Nightborn have found common ground with the Horde and plan to fight for them. So a lot of people are like, man, what the hell? Um, as the Alliance players, um, we help them out too. Here's what happened. So there's going to be a whole nother scenario uh, inside the Nightwell where the Alliance is going to go with Illyria and it's going to go badly. Uh, we know some Void stuff's gonna be popping up, a lot of different things. Uh, especially with her taint from the void uh, sort of kicking in and it's going to cause a whole bunch of issues while the nightborn ambassador is kind of there so the nightborn ambassador is going to be like dude the alliance screws with the void we just got out of a, of a pact uh, these blood elves know about a, an addiction personally so they're going to go with them it just makes sense overall so what exactly is required for them well one is getting exalted with the nightfallen you can easily get exalted with the nightfall and without even hardly having to do that much work you basically just go through the entire quest line of the nightborn uh and then you can do a few mission tables here and there but basically all the quest lines are out now so you could just go from part a to part b to part c to part d to the conclusion then you can run lfr finish up the Goldan and all the bosses in there and be set it's very easy. The max you are probably going to have to do is collect all the different mana around in these crystals, but they give you an item right in the beginning to sort of find them, and you can upgrade your stuff by just doing the quest line, honestly. So, very easy to get that. Uh, the next thing is doing the whole quest line. So, you probably just want to do the whole quest line. Not even a problem there. So, let's actually look at some of the classes that they can be. They can be Hunter, Mage, Monk, Priest, Rogue, Warlock, and warrior so hunter and mage obviously makes sense uh, they're very magic inclined uh, hunter just hunters a little bit out there but not really I mean a lot of them had pets they had those little tigers and things uh, monk is one of the questionable ones but I think it, 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 it works well with what they are uh, priest I mean they have high priestess uh, obviously they are kind of very religious with some of the stuff that they have so that makes sense as well uh, Rogue makes sense because you know they had a lot of uh, different spies and things in the mix. Warlock definitely makes sense. I think a Nightborn Warlock actually has a lot more lore holding to it than most of the other uh, races that we're going to be seeing later on. So Warlock just, I think a, a Warlock Nightborn would just be perfect. And then obviously Warrior. So let's actually dive in and look at the racials. The racials we have inscription skill is increased by 15%. So obviously they have a lot of uh, things that relate to inscription. So it makes sense for that. Uh, increased to magical by 1%. Here's the thing. A lot of people have been actually complaining about this because in a average player hands, it's not that big of a difference. It's just a minor difference that helps out with DPS. But in a player who is significantly better DPS, that 1% will do a lot more going forward. So for skilled players, they'll be doing great. Now, keep in mind that this is magical damage. Uh, warriors don't really have that many magical damage based abilities. So that's not going to do that well. Rogue has some, but not that many. Uh, Monk has quite a significant amount. So that won't be too bad of a thing. And Hunter has a little bit. So this is a racial that doesn't really work with all of them. So keep that in mind, especially choosing this class. Uh, I would highly suggest trying to go for like a magical base caster uh, just to kind of utilize that 1%. Now it's 1%, it's not too big of a deal if you do, but I think in the right hands, it can do a lot. And the next is conjure up a Eldritch Grimoire that allows you to have 
mail access for 1.5 minutes. So portable mailbox, uh, once again, very helpful tool there. Next is Arcane Pulse, just does a bunch of uh, AoE damage every two seconds and snares them for 50 seconds. So this is a good PvE and good PvP ability, so kind of fits that formula that we saw with the Night Elves. And next, uh, Arcane Resistance uh, reduces magical taking by 1%. Now this is another one that has a lot of controversy. Keep in mind this is magical damage. Does that mean all magical damage? So does that mean even if it's a fire spell, shadow spell, poison spell? whatever or nature spell in general is it all one percent it's very vague but if it's one percent flat to everything i think that's really powerful uh once again very good pve wise because or pvp and pve wise because now you have the increase in magic so the increase in dps and the decrease or yeah the decrease of damage taken so i think that could be really powerful especially going forward uh just in general really cool now this one is their mount it is a nightborn mana saver so hopefully it'll load in last time it didn't load these either it takes like a hot while sometimes but and it is not loading so sad but uh basically it looks exactly like the mount you get for just basically finishing up the whole quest line so that's kind of a little bit upsetting next they have their heritage armor the heritage armor looks just dope um i think it definitely needed this other coloring because the other set just looks like some of the sets that you got in the actual Suramar raid um the only reason that i say that the heritage armor is not as cool is because there's so many gear pieces in the Suramar raid that looks like their stuff which makes sense but as a heritage armor it just it's it's not as flashy as some of the other ones i'm really hoping that these like shoulders kind of get like an effect or something later on but if we actually look at the, if it loads, all right. So for some reason, the model wasn't loading. Kind of a shame, but. Basically, it doesn't have any really cool effects on it when I looked at it earlier, uh, but in general, all the decent gear pieces, I could see people using some of this armor, uh, especially if you want to be like a cloth-wearing sort of warrior. I could see that looking really cool. Next is their intro cinematic, and they have a few other ones here, so let's actually dive in and listen to them. For 10,000 years, Suramar was the only world we knew. As the ages passed, Azeroth changed around us and fell into the Legion's grasp. Oh, I like that. To secure our people's future, you must help reclaim our place in Azeroth. Venture forth alongside new allies and show the world that the legacy of the Nightborn is one of nobility and strength. All right, so initial reaction to that one, pretty cool altogether. Uh, I do like it. It's kind of funny. You, like obviously, you see like a naked night elf, or not even a night elf, night born, just walking forward. It's a little awkward, but nonetheless, it it was cool cinematic. I, I like that they're cleaning up the fell. They're sort of getting rid of it. They're like, yeah, we we aren't like this anymore. That was the old us. This is the new us. So. Really cool all together. Now let's watch the next one. Welcome to Lady Liadrin, champion. Welcome back to Suramar. I am pleased to receive you under more pleasant circumstances. It is good to see your city free, First August. For that, we owe you both a great debt. You proved instrumental to our cause. The Horde was proud to fight by your side against the burning Legion, my lord. I must admit, when I first learned of the Horde, I was skeptical that we would share common ground. Me too. <laughs> I thought our king from Kalimdor would make obvious allies, but their arrogance and mistrust soon proved otherwise. Arcanist Thalistra, I remember where your order stood in the war. Aw, oh, fucking Christ. How do we know you won't betray us and become the next Elisand? The next Azraya? 
We do not intend to be slaves to the Nightwell. We seek to drive the Legion from Suramar and put an end to Elisan's oppression. The Kaldori will fight to see the Legion defeated and the Nightwell destroyed. Beyond that, we shall see where Elune's wisdom guides us. It would seem Elune's wisdom guided her away from the bond we once shared. Ooh. So be it. Damn. The Sindori are also scorned by Taranda and her prideful lot. Yet for many ages, her people slept in dens or hid in trees while my people fought to save this world. Damn. The Alliance feels too walled off, too cloistered. My people will never endure such stagnation again. That is why I am grateful for your invitation to Silvermoon. I would like to inquire whether there could be a place for the Nightborn in your horde. Damn. Okay. So that actually that actually solves a lot of the questions there. Uh, so obviously Taronda <laughs> is the main reason. Uh, so I've always had issues with Taronda. She's just kind of like an overly kind of well, she's a bitch, <laughs> and uh, she's constantly she's not a political person at all. And I like how it's with the Blood Elves too, and I didn't even think about this from that angle. The Blood Elves kind of got screwed over in the war, especially with the Scourge, and lost their Night Well, or their Night, not their Night Well, the Sun Well, uh, when the Alliance didn't help them, and our Alliance was very racist towards them, and then also their Blood Elf allies were sort of screwed over. And then on top of it, the Night Elves literally were in Kalimdor, just sleeping in dens or try or like you know they're very druidic so a lot of them were like sleeping and fighting in the dream and a lot of them were trapped in the dream so this the blood elves don't really know how much they were trapped in the dream and stuff like that so i find that a very interesting angle to go with so that was really cool to watch now let's watch the throne room real quick skip ahead first arcanist Thalisra, an honored guest welcome to silver moon it is a pleasure to visit your Ooh, Illyria's here. Last. Thank you for extending the invitation, Regent Lord. Please call me Lorthamar. But where are my manners? Allow me to introduce another guest, Lady Illyria Windrunner, a hero of Silvermoon's past. An unexpected honor. I feel like it's gonna end badly. Silgrim told me of your courage during the campaign on Arbis. The omen is mine. I do not mean to intrude upon your visit. Perhaps I should return another time. Nonsense. Whatever you came to say, you may say in front of our guests. As you wish. I come bearing an offer from High King Anduin Ri I had hoped your visit was motivated by a love for Silver. Oh. Instead, you come at the behest of the Alliance's Boy King. How disappointing. Cutting words, Lorthamar. Are they yours, I wonder? Or has the dutiful ranger I knew become the mouthpiece of your war chief? Oh. You doubt my words. Yet how can we trust your own? Do you deny that the lords of the void whisper to you? Did you not surrender yourself to the shadows on Arbus? It Damn. seems the offer I bring has been anticipated and spurned very well. But before I leave, I have one request. It has been a thousand years since I set eyes upon the sun. Oh, man. May I visit it once again? I advise against it. We cannot trust that she will not... Whatever she has become, Illyria is a daughter of Quelthoris. I will not deny her pilgrimage to our most sacred site. First Arcanist, you and your retinue would be welcome to join us. I would consider it an honor to see the sun well, Lord Amar. Oh, now. And I prefer that my friends call me Thalissa. Rama, kindly open the way for us. Please follow me. Oh, God. Alright, so that was like ten times worse than I expected it to go. So we already have <laughs> Illyria trying to extend her stuff to for the Blood Elves to join the Alliance the same time that they were joining. So, on top of all the issues with the past, because you gotta, just gotta keep in mind, Jaina literally slaughtered a bunch of Blood Elves and screwed over that whole pact. And then on top of it, 
you have her who's part of the void going into this room with the ambassadors from the nightborn so we actually get to see that play out that was really cool to watch so i understand now why everything goes the way that it does so if you kind of put all the puzzle pieces to together especially from my previous video with the uh void elves put that all together you'll see some pretty it all it's all connected so that's very interesting to see uh, i'm not going to show you guys any vo uh vo because that just takes forever um you guys can actually look at the different models here these actually load super fast which is cool uh, these guys have tattoos so really cool all together here uh, they kind of glow actually uh, they're not really showing it here but if you actually like look across like that's so cool uh, they have a variety of different skin colors uh, right now it only shows the two but there is definitely more that are out there so I'm hoping that we can see a little bit more uh, and they have different hair colors but we'll actually just look at it from down here so they have different faces uh, this one's very dark looking <laughs> like super kind of creepy so if you're going to be going for a warlock like I was saying probably one of the cooler ones to do uh, the female ones once again kinda have like the same look going for it I'm hoping that they can kinda beef them out they have a variety of different hairstyles so bald a little bit longer hair it looks like um it looks like you're not gonna be able to have really short hair as a nightborn so it's unfortunate for people who actually like short hair but it looks like that's kind of like one of their racial traits is having very long luscious hair or being bald I guess but that was kind of interesting hair color once again there's not that much but uh, that race is predominantly has white hair so it makes sense uh, from a lore perspective uh, like I said there's only three different skin colors I'm hoping that there's more but I don't really see how they can go about adding more so it's an okay change uh, their ears though their ear jewelry has so many like if you as you can see here just like crazy amounts of ear jewelry I'll just give you a little taste there so very lush very cool looking uh, and then you have all these different scars and different tattoos you know you have plain and then you have it kind of showing and then kind of like the scratch look I think that's really cool but uh, in general what are my opinions on the Nightborn I think that the Nightborn are overall pretty cool um, I can I, I like how they answered the question of why are they joining the horde so they joined because of the blood elves talking about their addiction and how they are willing to help them sort of deal with that so kind of gives that buddy buddy feeling and then on top of it Tyrande being kind of a bitch to them and then you have Illyria coming in and being like yo you want to join the ally and then getting cut off and then now they're going to be going into a room and there's going to be a bunch of void creatures so that's just going to really just kill that so it's interesting though to see the alliance trying to extend their hand to the blood elves and they if they would have done it right they would have been able to get the nightborn and the blood elves into the fray but they screwed that up really badly so really cool lore wise i think lore wise them joining the horde is interesting um, I don't think we're going to really see that much of them because their story was kind of done in Legion, but I think having them is going to be really cool. I, I'm interested to see some sort of Tyrande and them kind of butting heads and her being like, oh, you joined the Horde, screw you, blah, blah, blah. I think that's going to be interesting to look at. Uh, looking at their overall classes, I think all of them are fine. Um, compared to the other races that are out there, these races actually make all complete sense. Like, I can look at a lore reason or a character in the game and be like, that makes sense, that makes sense, that makes sense. Uh, next is their racials. Racials are really solid. Um, I would highly suggest a magical based character just to utilize everything in here. Uh, from a PvE perspective, uh, it kind of sucks because a lot of other races only get 1% uh, damage reduction to a certain type. However, these guys get everything, so that's kind of cool. Uh, the mailbox is a nice little thing, uh, and then they also have this nice ability that snares. However, I don't really see this being used that much in a raid perspective however in a pvp perspective these guys will do really well so i think in mythic plus this will do really well with the snare ability and the whole doing damage but I, it depends on really how it goes will it cost mana will it not cost mana and i don't know it, it, it all adds up here and there but i think this is going to be really nice for magical based characters especially the mount is kind of disappointing 
uh, the heritage armor, uh, they added enough flair to the certain different types to where I can kind of vouch for it. I don't know if I'd level all the way for it because I could just run Suramar and get all the different armors that kind of look like this. Like, for example, the sort of Druid set looks very much like it. But I think that it, it works for what it is. Very interesting race altogether, but I don't want to make this video too long. I don't want to go on for 30 minutes about this race. I think it's pretty solid. I think I understand a lot of where they're taking the story with them. And I think that the fact that they did the story so well in including why the Alliance is not part of, you know, doesn't, ex it, they aren't part of the Alliance, basically. And it's, it makes very much lore sense wise why they do it. You know, we've seen now multiple reasons why they are not joining them. You know, you have the Blood Elves wanting to help them out. You got Tyrande being kind of a bitch to them. And then also the Void thing that they're about to walk in on. So, it overall just makes a lot of sense. But I, I want to see what your guys' opinions are. So, comment down below what you guys think. Um, be sure to smash that like button. And also, be sure to subscribe. Well, I am trying to get up to 900 subscribers. And more, speci more specifically, oh god, I can't talk trying to get up to 1000 by the end of february i know we can do it i believe we can do it we have been blowing up that subscriptions up like crazy like our goal was 800 by the end of january we're almost at 900 so i know we can do it but anyways i thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys next